Well, Jason, it's not normally this time of year we have a real focus on southern harness racing, but this winter rewards program that you've put together on Thursday, which of course is the Fulbury Park uh, licence, um, gee, it, it looks a deep, deep lake quarry, and we're going to have a good look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's pretty tricky. Uh, you know, I was uh, going through that and I was struggling to. Um, find some hot tips out of there. But, you know, it's good for the club, uh, Forby Park, racing at Wyndham, um, and HRNZ to put it on this series. So, um, so obviously keep horses running through later on in the season than they possibly would. But, um, you know, they're good fields, and um, yeah, it should be tricky enough. What's happening mm. in Southern Harness? Obviously, it's the middle of winter, so it's a, a quieter time. But something like this just lifts the spirits of people, I suppose, and gives the owners, trainers and drivers a great opportunity to race for some terrific money. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, we don't sort of get these opportunities very long to race for, for good money, and it's our last meeting of the season with Fulbury, so uh, we get a five-week gap and back into the new season. So, yeah, once we get through this, uh, we'll concentrate on putting on new series through the start of the – from the August period through, and um, we'll get some uh, info out to those trainers, you know, from especially the South Island. Um, we're going to do, do a bit more than what we normally have, and – uh, yeah, update the website a wee bit more. So you would sort of got plans in place to hopefully get up and going by the 1st of August. All right, so let's watch the space in that regard. Before we get into this preview, congrats on uh, the win at Addington the other night. Part owner, of course, of J.R. Bromack. Hasn't taken long to get a win on the board. And the way he did it, I know he only got there by a short margin, but you can have some fun there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, um, Hungry gets it pretty emotional. So, uh, you know, he's a good man for the for the game, uh, Hungry. But, yeah, no, it was good to get the win. You know, the boys got given that horse. So um, two starts for us for a second and now a win. So, uh, yeah, pretty exciting. All right. First race on Thursday of nine goes at 18 minutes past 12. We're going to focus on the back end, the quaddy, though. Commodore Hotel Christchurch Winter Rewards Mobile. It's over the 2,400 metres. It's one of four races for $20,000 that complete the program. How did you line them up in that first leg? Uh, there's a, a horse that's been racing really well in Canterbury. He's Santa's excuse. I'm pretty sure it'll be on your ticket. Uh, well, no, he's not. You know, I'm sort of pretty loyal to the Southlanders one. So I've uh, I've gone to number three. I'm watching you. I actually backed him last start, and he flew home nice for second behind the stable mate. So uh, I put him on top. Um, then Franco Huntington, the old war horse. I think he's uh, he's either a ten or eleven now. So um, you know, he's battling away with those couple of seconds, and he's one of those good horses that you want to have running every week. So he's in for second. And then the other old campaigner, number thirteen, Jabali uh, from Ross Hopes. But, you know, he's been going good as good as well. Obviously, PBD's in here. It sort of probably changes the dynamics. You know, Franco Huntington probably would have preferred to be the front line, but he's he's obviously on the second row, row so he's got to do his part. So, yeah, 3, uh, 14 and 13 for me there. All right, I reckon you add in the seven and we've got the first leg pretty much covered. Let's go to the second leg, the Mervyn and Val Todd. Now, that's the Soki man, isn't it, Merv Todd? Uh, he's he's a big part of Southern Harness, so great to have uh, the Todd family name associated with race number seven. Again, it's over the 2,400. It's the second leg of our late quaddy. Yeah, Merv, he was, he was a good man from the Gore Club and uh, he was a life member there, so uh, it's good to see that him and Val have been recognised. Uh, I put number 10, McAndrew Navigator, in there. Um, Jeremy Douglas' team's doing very well at the moment and I thought that from that alley, he's probably a good chance there. So I put him in to beat number 13, 5 straight. You know, Nathan's always a... You can't leave Nathan out of any any sort of combos you take. So him in for second. And then I put Jeremy Douglas's other horse who won the other day, number one, Magic Sign, who obviously come down from Graham Courts. Uh, and, you know, he's drawn the barrier one. So it's a good chance. And Craig Ferguson's on this week. So yeah, I've gone 10, 13 and one. Yeah, I reckon the horse following out Magic Sign, Northview Peg with the country's leading rainsman, Blair Orange aboard, uh, would be worth putting on your ticket as well. So the indications early on, the first couple of legs, we need a decent spread. Let's go to the boss, Joe Racing Winter Rewards Handicap Trot. Can you explain that name to me? Who's the boss, Joe? Uh, well, Kenny Baines, he, he's sponsoring that, so that's Joe Baines' wife. So right. uh, there must be something, well, something in that name. name. Yep, so. I've got it. Yes, so we'll leave that to Kenny. He can explain that if it goes any further. Um, yeah, it's um, you know the third leg, third leg of this thing and the winter rewards, and they don't get any easier. But you know, I've put on uh, thirteen one more moments, twenty meters, so he's not too far behind. And you know, Blair Orange is on job, and uh, you know he, he's doing his part, so he'll be pretty tough. Um, second, I took number four, Dwindle Mist. 
Uh, Brad Williamson's on there for uh, for Dad. And third, I put in Maddie's horse, number five, Jordan Nan. But, you know, there's a few chances in there, but um, obviously we can't take them all. Kawai Monarch, uh, gift card, a last start winner, all about the moment, a last start winner. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. It's not an easy leg at all. And one more moment, of course, out of Corker Moment, who's a daughter of Nakura. That's the Take a Moment family. So, um, yeah, anything with a moment in at the moment is winning down there. So you might want to uh, put them in. Let's go to this last leg, see if we can narrow this one down a little bit because we've spent a wee bit so far, Jason. So uh, what do we need in the Icon Construction Winter Awards to wrap up what should be a terrific day of harness racing? Yeah, well, I suppose if you wanted the anchor one, you'd probably have to take number eight American airtime. He hasn't raced for three weeks, but uh, look, I'm sure Craig Ferguson out there, you know, so he's, he's on the home track there at least. He's probably been doing a bit of swimming as well. So um, he's probably a pretty, pretty good show. Um, a horse I backed last week, Art Attack, uh, number 13. Like He's he's one ten. Uh, uh, Sam Motley gets back on board. So, um, you know, probably didn't get a lot of luck last week or was a wee bit further back. So uh, perhaps number 13 in there to uh, run second. Yep, all right, 8 and uh, 13. And, well, you can never leave out Santana, Mark, and that combination, of course, of Blair Orange and Michael House. So if you can spread the net a little bit wider in that last league, you can certainly do that. Uh, looks a really good program. 12.18, the start time, Jason, to uh, everyone associated with the Fordbury Club that's heading uh, to Wyndham. Looking forward to uh, what should be uh, a terrific nine-race card. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Greg. Yeah, so we just wish the club all the best, obviously, for the day, and hopefully the weather pays its part.